Hello, my name is John Poole and I was the Vice President of Sales and Marketing and this is the story of Aurora. It will tell of two pioneers who created a startup microcomputer company that in a short time would become the global leader of the microcomputer industry. This story, as it will be told, will provide a quarter-by-quarter -quarter perspective from inside the company and touch on lessons learned and the decisions as they were made. After Aurora's two-year journey is told, an inside look at the bottom line of Aurora and its business performance will be reviewed. This tale will wrap up with an inviting look at an evaluation of the current situations of Aurora that will be used to power this company into the future. And like all good financial stories should, it will end happily for these two businessmen. Welcome to Aurora. Hello, this is Ed Rapetsky. I was uh, co-president and acted as uh, vice president for uh, manufacturing and uh, finance. Uh, for quarter one, we started this uh, time period with a million dollars in cash and a desire to be the dominant computer producer in the world. We chose a name, purchased some high quality market research, and devoted time to planning. Uh, when it came to marketing surveys and marketing data to purchase, uh, we chose uh, what we felt was the Goldilocks zone. We didn't invest too little uh, so as to get in, in numbers that were of little value, but we not so much uh, that uh, we were going to get too much specificity. Uh, we felt by uh, choosing a 95% accuracy, accuracy rate uh, that was just right. We started this quarter with $2 million in fresh market data. We received and analyzed the market data, and by using a normalization method, we were able to determine that the most lucrative segments were the Mercedes and Innovator markets in the U.S. and Europe. In order to advertise our computers as made in the United States of America, we built our factory in Chicago. We committed ourselves to the global market early by opening our first sales offices in New York and London. We were met by market advisors who informed us that at this early stage we lacked the technology to appeal to Mercedes buyers, so we modified our target markets to innovators and travelers. Our first models were the elite for the innovator market and the wanderer for the traveler market. Additionally, we adopted a policy of always investing heavily in quality by research and developing the line changeover and quality. Quarter three, uh, we opened our first stores in our first two markets and produced 18 computers per day. Uh, we produced our first advertising focused on uh, local foot traffic in those two cities, offering two models. Uh, we received and used an additional million dollars in capital. The results of quarter three saw Aurora with the largest demand and the lead in both the Innovator and Mercedes markets. In this quarter, we received and used an additional $1 million in capital. However, through quality evaluations, we found a flaw in the keyboard of the Wanderer model and thus modified it to the Wanderer 2 model. With growth in mind, we increased production to 50 computers per day. Additionally, we doubled our sales locations by opening offices in Los Angeles and Berlin. Quarter 5 the results of quarter four were very encouraging. We led an innovator and traveler market share, as well as our long planned Mercedes target market. This allowed us to show a positive return on investment, $36 per share. This positive cash flow, with an infusion of $5 million in additional capital, and a bond issue of a little over $9 million, allowed us to make a strategic push. We committed by investing to increasing production by quadrupling uh, capacity opening 10 more sales sites and investing in rapidly developing the technology to meet the needs of Innovator and Mercedes markets. The results of quarter five were negative in regards to overall cash flow. This was the expected result of our strategic investment. With the opening of 10 new stores, radical increases to production capacity, plus the investments into research and development, we knew quarter five would be our least financially productive quarter. This quarter did, however, see us hold strong with our market share, as well as an increase in our sales. 
Quality and technology investments continued as we began this quarter with our new model. The exceptional model focused on our newly declared targeting of the Mercedes market. Additionally, we opened sales offices in the last six markets, and we primarily focused on the Mercedes and innovative markets with our increased capacity. At this stage, we were producing 200 computers per day. As we uh, started quarter seven, the results from quarter six were outstanding. We had $23 million in cash and led in the Mercedes Innovator and still the Traveler markets. Our increased capacity allowed us to move over 11,000 units in that quarter. We had strong demand, continued to uh, increase production and advertising, and continued to invest heavily in technology and quality R&D. To increase this rapid growth of $80 per share, we returned to the bond market for an additional 12 million dollars in capital. We were able to release updated Wanderer 3 and the exceptional 2. For this quarter, we were now producing 350 units per day. The results of quarter 7 showed we still led our primary chosen markets of Mercedes and Innovator. However, we lost the lead in our secondary market, the Traveler. In quarter seven, we sold almost 20,000 units for $69 million in sales. This success allowed us to continue our investments in production, research and development, and to expand our marketing and sales program for an even better quarter to come. In quarter eight, we increased production to 750 units per day. We ended production of a lagging elite model and released our improved exceptional three model as well as replacing the Wanderer 3 model with the Wanderer 4. We also ambitiously released our workhorse model into the workhorse market. Quarter 8 was a hold nothing back kind of quarter for Aurora that even saw Ed give his tailored coffee is for closer speech. And you know what? It worked. This quarter saw Aurora continue to lead in our chosen markets, sell more than 46,000 computers, and create more than $142 million in sales. The final cumulative scorecard shows Aurora led overall, as well as in uh, financial performance, market performance, and marketing performance, wealth, and manufacturing productivity. We lagged in investment in, in the future uh, because our investment opportunities were capped while growth was still very strong. Similarly, our asset management was modified by our large pool of assets. We chose to sacrifice our financial risk score by borrowing so heavily in the bond market, but this strategy did indeed pay off. In regards to stepping beyond the constraints of the exercise, Aurora has established a plan for continued success moving into the future. Aurora's focus will be on sales, expansion, and financial planning. With the purchasing of website domains, Aurora has taken the initial steps towards doing business on the World Wide Web. The projected increase in sales means the need for production growth and corporate expansion as a second production facility will be established. Financially, Aurora is currently in an excellent position looking forward into the future. And with an initial public offering coming within the calendar year, Aurora intends to stay that way. Our bottom line is, we have almost half of our chosen lucrative sectors and the quality, cost-reducing volume and capacity to enter the more numerous workhorse and maybe even cost-cutter segments. Further, we have the capital to catch up on portable technology and re-enter that market. It is time for a large infusion of capital to continue rapid growth. As you can see from the figures, a single year can make quite the difference. Total assets increased $73 million, cash on hand increased $46 million, fixed assets increased nearly $21 million, most amazingly annual sales increased more than 2100%. Lastly, we were able to decrease our ratio of cost of goods sold numbers in comparison to sales from 56% to 47%. This slide uh, shows all of our models and the bars show how many were sold in a given quarter. Uh, we did indeed uh, move 
almost 85,000 units uh, with exceptional two and three combining for over 50,000 of that in the last two quarters. Uh, I'd just like to explain this slide a little bit in detail. Uh, you see all six quarters of our manufacturing history there. Uh, if you look at the elite down at the bottom line, you see light blue for quarter three, orange for quarter four, gray for quarter five, uh, gold for uh, quarter six, and blue for quarter seven, which is when we ended production of that model. But that sandwich uh, shows the growth of that model's production over time. So you can see up in the Wanderer series, Wanderer 1, you can't see anything. Wanderer 2, we fixed the keyboard. Uh, orange gray, great gold in uh, quarter six. Uh, we replaced that with the Wanderer 3, which did okay in quarter seven. And then we, uh, quarter eight, we brought out the Wanderer 4, and it's not doing very well in that uh, uh, abandoned market of ours. Uh, then you can see the exceptional series above that, exceptional one, which was quarter six. Uh, got got the legs under it, really got into the Mercedes market, got into the uh, innovator market with that, uh, saw the potential, upgraded with new technology again in uh, in quarter seven, and you see the, the great sales in quarter seven and eight for the exceptional two. Above that, you see even better technology. The exceptional three, our, our top of the line model, had a very strong uh, quarter in quarter eight. Uh, above that, you see Workhorse One, which is our uh, move back into uh, uh, out into different markets with uh, uh, the uh, Workhorse market uh, clearly targeted, uh, and uh, also had some uh, work there in the cost cutters, uh, the volume production uh, savings uh, passed into the customer price, and, and and we have a lot of strong potential with that. As you can see overhead, our, our sales have increased rapidly quarter to quarter you can see how the last four quarters have just been progressively better. This graph charts our market share as broken down into the individual segments as well as displaying total market share. Blue represents the Mercedes market and gold represents the innovator market. With seven competitors we were pleased with obtaining such large portions within these segments. The traveler segment is in gray and its early success helped lay the financial foundation that would help fund our growth and global expansion. It was disappointing to see this market share decrease over the last couple quarters as we focused less on this segment. In regards to total market share, we were very satisfied with finishing with a third of the total market. Here we are looking at the current situation, first by customers, uh, then by competitors, and then finally do a strength, weakness, uh, opportunity, threat, SWOT analysis of ourselves. In regards to customers, we approached each segment individually and designed our computers based on how the computers would be used and the user want and need. With this slide, we want to display the volume of customers for each individual market. Two figures to focus on are the starting value of the Mercedes market and the ending value of the cost cutter market. Both numbers reflect segments that are not being targeted. In the beginning, it was the Mercedes line as companies did not have the technology to appeal to it. In the end, it was the cost cutter segment as a lack of attention was shown by the microcomputer industry. As a company, we felt this potential market was too far from our desire to produce high-end, high-quality computers for the available time periods. Additionally, there was an extremely high demand coming from the workhorse market that went mostly unsatisfied. Here we do an analysis of our uh, competitors. Uh, this is the balance scorecard from the end of quarter eight and uh, kind of uh, shows really using the total performance to rank order our competitors uh, in that order. Uh, our greatest uh, uh, threat comes from our leading competitor, which is JKH. Uh, their strength are strong marketing and high demands, uh, as well as a global reach, uh, which uh, they're the only other company with a global reach. Their weakness is the low amount of demand satisfied, which will lead to ill will. Uh, and potential to poach into the traveler and workhorse uh, markets uh, this next year. Uh, the next competitor is ISIS. Uh, they uh, had great marketing and strong asset management. 
their total volume though and, and production uh, capability remains low. Uh, next, uh, Leading Edge uh, has invested heavily in the future and manage assets well. They have no debt. Uh, their weakness is in low market uh, performance. Uh, next is Stark Industries. Uh, they have uh, great marketing and no debt, uh, but their market share is limited. Uh, below them, SMW, it's fair market performance but a low marketing score. Uh, they uh, have uh, not much capital uh, at this point uh, either. Heracles is next. Uh, they are in financial trouble this quarter. Uh, and, but uh, they have a strong market performance. Broadline uh, has had a rough year and are deep in debt, but uh, they, uh, they did have uh, some pretty strong uh, marketing effectiveness numbers. This slide reflects on what we felt were our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In regards to strengths, we felt that we made the right decision in the customers that we chose to focus on. We chose the smaller segments with the higher profit. We felt that this allowed us the ability, while producing still a smaller volume of computers, to sell them at higher profits. We also felt that it was a strong strategy to produce high technology, high quality computers that we felt provided us a credibility within the marketplace. We also felt that we used our financial situation successfully in leveraging the use of bonds this allowed us to increase our production and open additional offices throughout the country and the globe. In regards to weaknesses, we did feel that the exposure we had in the fifth, in the fifth quarter did present itself as a weakness, uh, but further down the road, as we leveraged those funds, we are currently in a situation where we could actually pay all of that back. We also felt that our market strategy began to slow and taper. We eventually developed the method of mimicking those competitors who had the highest scores because we didn't get the results we wanted to when we adjusted the marketing based on the data we had. We also felt it was a weakness in regards to the lost traveler market share. Uh, we abandoned this market deliberately to focus on the Mercedes it's a condition should this exercise continue that we would have uh, been happy with turning around. In regards to opportunities, we felt there was an unmet demand within the workhorse and cost cutter markets. It seemed that the workhorse market was undersatisfied and the cost cutter market was under approached. We also felt that there would be continued growth uh, within all markets. Uh, there would be more people buying computers. We also felt that another opportunity would be the financial trouble that some of the competitors appeared to be in as the exercise began to end. In regards to threats, we felt our largest competitor uh, threatening us was JKH. They increased market share and, and took over the traveler segment that we abandoned. Now uh, we're going to have uh, the Vice President's uh, brief in our strategy session uh, in this order. Uh, so first John will go with uh, sales and marketing and then I'll return and talk uh, manufacturing and financial. In sales we were very satisfied with the results we received from our sales force. We felt that they exceeded our expectation. With them we try to provide training and product education to meet what we felt would be a higher need for the target markets that we had. We also felt that moving forward we would need to continue to expand our sales offices and approach it more of a tailoring each office for its city and region versus more of the blitz approach that we used in our first two years. We also felt that moving forward, we would need to expand into the internet um, by opening up websites and creating global sales to countries that we currently weren't serving. In regards to marketing, as a company, we were left wanting. We would like to have had a better grasp on the factors that affected advertising judgment. 
We took a high volume approach to marketing that we felt could have been more effective with higher judgment scores. Part of our thinking was that if we could do volume advertising, we could increase the sizes of the market demands. The bulk of our advertising was directed to the innovator and Mercedes markets. Moving forward, we'd like to continue to adjust our advertisements to reach maximum marketing effectiveness, as well as increase expansion into other markets. We uh, discovered a practical limit to production increase, which is 400 units per day uh, is the limit, uh, at least in the simulation, for increasing quarterly production. Uh, that said, uh, even if we uh, uh, continued for another four quarters in, uh, in this next year, Aurora would uh, grow that limit or uh, from 750 uh, units per day now to a year from now generating 2,350 units per day, uh, which would uh, uh, allow us to uh, maintain a very high delivery rate uh, as the market continues to grow. Uh, research and development. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of opportunity there to uh, expand. Uh, we're we're going to have to go heavy back into the technology for the Mercedes and Innovator classes uh, as they uh, 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 the technology tree continues to expand and grow. Uh, we're going to keep working those as our priority. The next priority for us is going to be the Traveler technology is to have, invest heavily uh, in um, a quarter or two to uh, gain all of the uh, R&D opportunity that's there so that we can bring out a Wanderer 5 or a Wanderer 6 that that uh, just fits that market to a T uh, that we can produce in large enough numbers that uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, retake a large market share there. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, invest in the quality improvement technology uh, every uh, every quarter as we continue to move those uh, uh, bell curves and reduce the amount of failures. Uh, we still we already have the highest uh, quality manufacturing program uh, in the market, and uh, we're not going to lose that edge uh, because uh, uh, it takes multiple uh, quarters of investment to really you know, gain that edge, and and we don't want to lose it by uh, uh, by uh, lagging back. Last. Uh, the changeover technology, uh, we've, uh, we've invested every quarter in that, and we're going to continue for the same reasons as quality improvement. Uh, it allows us to dynamically change between models uh, much more quickly, saves us a lot of production capacity and time, uh, and uh, is a key to our uh, ability uh, to produce. Our financial strategy going forward is while we have a lot of uh, cash on hand, uh, that's a requirement in this rapidly growing market, and uh, we don't want to miss uh, uh, expansion opportunities, opportunities to uh, uh, maybe purchase a competitor or open into a, a new market area by uh, going cash poor. Uh, because of that, uh, we have three requirements going forward. Uh, we need to spend... Uh, the $32 million uh, to expand our production capability over the next year uh, so we can get to those uh, previously mentioned uh, production levels. We need to spend about $30 million in R&D this year, $62 million of requirement there, but we have a requirement to maintain a strong cash position, as I explained earlier, to seize those opportunities in this market. Uh, so our financial strategy going forward really is to execute an IPO. Uh, to obtain about $50 million in capital to ensure we can meet all three of those demands uh, to support rapid growth going forward. We would be capable of using an additional $50 million to continue to achieve the kind of growth we have seen to date. Our return on equity at the end of year two is 519%, which should enable us to have a successful initial public offering. In order to establish a more flexible initial value, we're going to split existing shares by five, so current shares of $100 will now be five shares of a nominal value of $20. We're going to take 2.5 million shares to the market at $20, which will enable us to roughly add 500% to our equity financing. Our desired stock price is then $20, but priced to allow a more dynamic initial sale. Using recent IPOs, 
a price between $20 and $40 hits a price point that is more lucrative in high demand IPOs like Aurora's will be. We look to execute this in the next 90 days in order to best use our currently strong financial records. And John, thank you very much, uh, and thank you all for listening. Uh, this concludes our briefing, uh, but uh, we are standing by to uh, take your questions on the online discussion forum, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you, and uh, continue, this, continue this chat in another media. Uh, thank you all for listening, and you have a good day.